Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to UniZor Education. Um, today we will talk about equations of higher order than two. With uh, uh, quadratic equations, equations of the order two, um, we did have basically purely theoretical material how to derive, generally speaking, how to derive the formula for solutions of the quadratic equation. Now, with the uh, equation of the third degree, the cubic equation, where the variable is in x, in, in x cubed, the situation is more difficult. Actually, there are some formulas um, which, in theory, might be used, uh, but they are quite complex. And these formula express the solutions to a cubical equation um, in terms of coefficients. Now, when you go to even higher degrees, like the fourth degree, that's even more complex. And um, as far as the fifth and, uh, and, and higher, there is actually a very interesting theorem in algebra that uh, there is no general solution for uh, equations of the fifth and higher degrees in terms of its uh, coefficients, which can be expressed in uh, regular, uh, regular algebraic expression. I mean. So um, basically, if you have uh, an equation of a higher order, higher than two, people don't usually solve these equations in general. However, um, since we are not really pursuing the idea of solving the equation, but rather um, equipping you with certain approaches and, uh, uh, and guessing and tricks, if you, wish, if you wish, just to develop the mathematical thinking and just to be able to face the problem which you might not really know the solution beforehand, um, I will use these uh, uh, higher order equations just to illustrate certain approaches which you can take and hopefully they will be educational enough and uh, just, you know, help you to develop certain logical thinking, etc. So again, I will use the higher order uh, equations just to develop the brain power, <laughs> if you wish. Um, all right. Now, first of all, um, what is the representation of the higher order equation? Well, in a concrete example, you can say something like 3x uh, fourth minus 2x equals to 0. This is just an example of an um, equation of a fourth order, um, which, um, well, it can be solved, uh, and by the way, purely algebraically, uh, but that's not the problem right now. Right, no right now, this is just an illustration of, uh, of the polynomial uh, on the left and the uh, uh, equation of the fourth degree altogether. Now, if I want to express generally how any equation of the higher order looks like, I would use the following um, symbol uh, symbolics. Um, something like this. The polynom of the kth degree, which is a function of x. What is this? Well, this is a sum of coefficient with x to the kth degree, plus another coefficient with x to k minus 1 degree, plus etc., etc. So x to the power of k, x to the power of k minus 1, etc., down to a k minus 1 x plus a k. That's the polynomial of the k's degree, where x is in the power of k. And these are different coefficients. Generally speaking, uh, coefficients are usually real numbers. Very rarely they are complex. So the equation of k's order, or k's degree, is something like this. Some polynomial of x of degree k is equal to zero. So this is the general expression of, uh, of the equation of the higher order, <coughs> of any order actually, k, where 
R as a function of X with this index, if you wish, K, is a representation of this sum of different elements. Each, each one of them is X to certain power, and the maximum power is K, which corresponds to this particular, um, this particular index in my general expression of the polynomial. Um, and uh, well, equals to zero, obviously. Sometimes this member, a k which has no x with it, usually it's called the uh, free coefficients. Uh, and, this, and this one is usually the first coefficient, or the coefficient uh, with x to the highest order, in this case, k. OK, so this is general polynomial expression uh, of the equation of the higher order. Right, OK, and uh, as I said, there is no such thing as a general solution of this for like any k. At least for k greater or equal than 5, there are no general solutions. Uh, for k equals 3 and 4, as I said, there are, but they're too complex. So usually, if people have a general solution with some coefficients, they go you know, to computers, basically, to, to solve it. There are certain numerical algorithms which allow um, to write the programs for, for, for the computers, and they will come up with certain quite precise solutions if, they, if these solutions exist, of course. Now, in our case, since we are pursuing a purely educational goal, I will um, uh, emphasize two methods which might, in theory, be used uh, to solve certain equations in certain cases. And again, the art of this is to find these methods, these specific, me specific methods, to solve specific equations, not the general type of. OK, so what are specific, uh, specific me methods which I would like to talk about today? Well, there are two. The method number one is the following. Let's assume that our polynom polynomial expression like this, that it can be expressed as a product of one polynomial expression times another polynomial expression. Now, this is a polynomial of the kth order. This is of nth order, and this is nth order. And what's important is that both m, sorry, and n should be less than k. Well, obviously, they should be less than k, because if you will think about the polynomial of the nth degree, so k uh, x is in the nth degree, and there is some expression. And q is a polynomial of the nth degree, so x has the maximum uh, n. So if you will put this polynomial, complete expression, and this, and multiply them, the highest order will be the highest order of this one, which is m, and the highest order of this one, which is n. And when you multiply them together, you will have m plus n as a, as a degree. Why? Very simply. Let's just do it in one simple example. Let's substitute this is a0 times x to the k's plus something. This, let's say, is b0 x to the mth maximum plus something times, and this will be c0 x to the nth plus something. Now, if you will open parentheses and multiply, what's the maximum uh, power the x will be in when you have the maximum of this, which is m, and the maximum of this, which is n? So it will be b0 times Z, c0 times x m times x n, which is b0 c0 x to the m plus n. And if they are equal, the maximum power of this should be equal to maximum power of this, which means 
a zero x to the case equals to b zero c zero. Let's be accurate. X to the m plus m. That's what we will have. This is the maximum power of x, and this is the maximum power of x. So if these expressions are the same, these members should be the same, which means a0 should be equal to b0 times c0, and k should be equal to m plus n. Since it's identity, it's supposed to be um, equal for any x, right? If this is a true identity, true representation of r as a, multiple, a, multi, a product of p times q. So, obviously, if m plus n is equal to k, and we are not considering trivial cases when m, m is equal to 0 or n is equal to 0, because that actually makes the whole expression just a constant. Um, so obviously m plus n is equal to k, from which follows that both m and n are less than k. By the way, they are all positive and integer numbers. I didn't mention it, but I kind of assumed that this is understood. So m plus n is equal to k, so m is smaller and n is smaller. So if you can represent a polynomial of, let's say, third degree, third degree, with a product of the polynomial of the second degree and the first degree, then you have a chance, basically. Then you can have the multiplication of the second and the first degree. So m is 2 and n is 1. You will have k is equal to 3, and that will be the polynomial of the third degree. Now, why do we have to represent R as a product of two polynomials of smaller, of lower degree? For a very, very simple reason. Let's say you know how to solve this particular equation and this particular equation separately. Well, look at it this way. If you found an x when this is equal to 0, then obviously this is equal to 0, because it's a multiplication. So any solution to this equation, which is easier than original, because the m is slower than, lower than k, any solution to this equation will be a solution to the original equation r k x equals to 0. This is what you have to solve. If this is what you have to solve, and r is represented as a product, then any solution of the p is equal to 0, and any solution of the q is equal to 0 would be a solution to r is equal to 0. So one problem of solving an equation of, let's say, third degree, you might reduce to solving two problems. One is the first degree, and another is the second degree just as an example, which is easier. Obviously, the lower degree, the lower order of the equation is, the easier it is to solve. And if you can reduce it down to first and the second degree polynom, well, you know the formulas, and you definitely can solve any quadratic or linear equation without any problems. So what's important is to reduce uh, solving the uh, equation of the higher order to solving the two more two or more equations of the lower order, that's the approach which you can take. That's one thing, and let me illustrate it with an example. So, if you are given an equation, let's just think about it this way: whether it's an, a, a math exam or anything like that, and you have given an equation x to the third plus 5x squared plus x minus 15 is equal to 0. Obviously, you cannot solve this equation using any kind of a formula, because there is no formula. At least, you don't know the formula uh, for the cubical equation. Which means you have to find something which will simplify your job. And again, my first recommendation is to find some representation of this polynomial of the third degree as a product of two polynomials of the lower degree, like first and the second. Well, absolutely the, the most difficult problem is how. Yes, you know that maybe it is possible, but you don't know how. Well, 
here it is. Here is my recommendations. Let me just say that somehow, magically, I have guessed the following thing. Let's represent 5x squared as 3x squared plus 2x squared. So x cubed stays. How I guessed it is not really the question right now. But let's consider that I have guessed it. And I will represent six, uh, x as uh, 6x minus 5x. So this is the same as this. And this is the same as this, minus 15 equals to 0. So this is an identical transformation. Now, why did they do it? Here is why. Now let's consider pairs. One pair, second pair, and third pair. You can uh, factor out x squared here, and you will have x squared times x plus 3. You can factor out 2x from the second pair, 2x squared plus 6x. Factor out 2x. What will be left? From 2x squared, you will have x. And from 6x, if you factor out 2x, you will have 3. Finally, Minus 5x minus 15, the third pair, I will factor out minus 5, and I will have x plus 3. You see, so far, I just did a couple of identical transformation, and I have seen that, you see, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3. Now I can factor out x plus 3, and what will be left? x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals to 0. So what did I do, actually? I have represented my original polynomial of the third degree with the multiplication of two polynomials of the first and the second degree. Obviously, you can solve the, uh, each of these uh, e equations. x plus 3 is equal to 0 separately. That's x equals to minus 3. And this x squared plus 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. Just a plain quadratic equation. You can solve that, too. Now, solving these equations, basically, again, as I told in the general case, gives you solution to original equation x cubed plus 5x squared, etc., equals to 0. So what was the important part of it? The most important is not really solving these equations, because this is trivial, but how to guess, basically, how to spread all these um, uh, coefficients like 5 into 3 plus 2, 1 into 6 minus 5, etc. That's the most important guessing game which you have to accomplish, because after that everything is just trivial. It's like going along the paved road. So first you have to climb the mountain, and then you see everything, how to do it. Now, um, is there a general recommendation which I can give in this particular case? Well, yes, there is. And, um, but it, again, it's just a general recommendation. It doesn't mean it will always work or something like this. Think about it this way. If you are given an equation of this type and somebody really asks you, solve it. Obviously, you understand that most likely solutions are, well, relatively simple because otherwise you would not be asked to do it. I mean, nobody would give you some crazy coefficients with uh, big rational numbers, etc., etc. So usually it's uh, integer numbers, and if they are integer, um, to look for a solution would probably be uh, um, very uh, easy among very easy among uh, factors of the free uh, factors of the free. Uh, coefficient, the one which has no x. Why? But here is why. Look at this. If you have some, let's say, linear equation and quadratic equation, linear um, expression and quadratic expression, expression, free member will only be obtained if you have uh, no x here, which is 3, and no x here, which is minus 5. And that would actually, if you will multiply them, that's the only 
uh, two numbers which will give you the free member of the original equation, 15. Everything else will contain x in some degree. So if you will open all these parentheses, all different um, products, x times x squared, or 3 times 2x, etc., all of them will contain x in, in, except one. Free member from here and free member from there. So only one gives you the multiplication of these three members will give you the free member of the original uh, free coefficient uh, in, the, uh, in the original equation. So you might just suspect that if there is some kind of a linear expression which can be factored out, it should be x plus some factor of the free member. Now, how many factors does this guy have? Well, 5 and 3 and minus 5 and minus 3. So these four different variations should actually be tried. In this particular case, the factor minus 3 uh, is, is the one which is used here. So x plus 3 would be something which you can look for. So you can try um, uh, in another one. You can try, for instance, minus 5, which means let's try to do x plus 5 and try to parenthesize this out, to factor it out. Let's just try and see if, if it works. So let's consider I would like to factor out x plus 5. Well, then from these two, I have to factor out x squared. And I will, I will get x plus 5, right? Now, this is not x plus 5. This is x plus 5. But I have to have minus 15, so I have to have minus 20. This is definitely something extra. So x plus 5 doesn't really work in this particular case. Well, let's try x minus 5, for instance. Okay. Well, if I want to have x minus 5, and I have x cubed plus 5x squared, what should I have? I should have x squared, but now I have minus 5x squared. X square. I need 5 plus x squared, so I need to add 10x squared. OK, now I have converted it. Plus x minus 15 equals to 0. Now, I need x minus 5 again. Now, if I will... Um, factor out 10x and get x minus 5, what, what, what do I have? I have 10x squared, so this is fine. But now I have plus x, but here I have minus 50x. So I have to add 51x to satisfy this. And minus 15. Again, x minus 5, x minus 5, but this is something which is completely extra. So x minus 5 also doesn't work. So by trying a few um, divisors uh, of this free coefficient, I can just eliminate a few. And finally, if I will get x plus 3, let's just think about again, how did I do it? Okay, I know that this thing has, 15 has 3 and minus 3 among the divisors. So let's try x plus 3. Okay, if this is x plus 3, now this is supposed to be factored out x squared. Now I have x cubed plus 3x squared. But I need 5x squared, right? So I have to add 2x squared. OK, so far so good. Now, I have plus x minus 15 equals to 0. So now, this is already x plus 3x squared. Now, I have 2x squared, so I have to factor out 2x. And I need the same x plus 3, right? So what do I have here? I have 6x. Uh, sorry, uh, yes. 2x squared plus 6x. Now, if I have 6x, but I need only 1x, so I have to subtract 5x. And, lo and behold, if I will factor out minus 5, I will have x plus 3. My guess is correct. So, by just trying to guess which one of the divisors of the free coefficient fits this type of a schema, you'll be fine. So if there is a solution, you will find it. But again, we're talking about simple cases when solutions are 
um, uh, look for among integer numbers, obviously, and hopefully you will not be given a more complex um, uh, equations because it's much more difficult to solve and hopefully uh, people don't really try to solve these equations in some kind of a formulas, even if there are the possibilities, obviously. So, again, if you're looking for a solution of equation which contains integer coefficients and you are looking for a solution which is also integer, it's helpful to look at the factors and the free uh, coefficients. In this case, it's 5 and 3, minus 5 and minus 3, so you have to plus x plus 3, x minus uh, 3, x plus 5, x minus 5, only four cases. You have to just go one by one and you might find something, if it exists. It might not exist, in which, in which case, well, sorry, there is no such a good solution. All right, so that's the first example which I wanted to present you. The first way of solving uh, equations of the higher order, so you have to somehow guess in certain particular cases you can, uh, how to represent it as a product of two um, uh, expressions of a lower order. Now, the second uh, approach which I might suggest to you is the following. What if um, you can represent uh, this particular equation of the case degree with a substitution? Let's say you can substitute something like um, a, some, some kind of a solution uh, of uh, some kind of expression, sorry, uh, x um, squared plus 2x plus 3, for instance. You can represent it as some new variable y. And if you can express this particular equa equation in terms of y, but it will be of a different uh, degree, degree t, which is smaller than this one. Then, what you can do is, you can try to solve this equation uh, in terms of y. And then, having the value of y, you can solve this equation in terms of x. Now, um, if I am not clear enough in this particular general case, let me just express it in one particular example, and uh, it will be quite well understood what, what I mean. Let's say you have an equation x4 minus 2x squared minus 3 equals to 0. Well, this is an equation of the uh, fourth order. x is in the power of 4. But you notice that if you will substitute x squared equals to y, in terms of y, the equation looks like y squared minus 2y minus 3 is equal to 0. Well, in this case, it's very easily visible that x squared can be substituted and you'll get a quadratic equation for y. Now, um, how to solve this quadratic equation for y? Well, very easily. First, you represent it as a, I don't remember the formula, so I will represent it um, in terms of a full square, which is y squared minus 2y plus 1 minus 4 equals to 0. So I represented minus 3 as 1 minus 4, and this is a full square. This is y minus 1 square equals to 4, right? y minus y square, 4 is equal to no. So y minus 1, absolute value is equal to 4. So it's y, min y minus 1 is equal to 4, or um, one, uh, uh, y minus 1 is equal to minus 4. Two solutions. Is this right? Oh, sorry, it's square root square root of 4. So it's 2, basically. 2 and minus 2. 2 and minus 2. Okay, which means y is equal to 3, and y is equal to 1 goes here, minus 1. 
So we have two solutions for y, and we know that x squared is equal to y. So now we can find what the x is. In terms of real numbers, only square root of 3 and minus square root of 3 will be solutions to x. And in terms of real numbers, this one doesn't produce any uh, real solutions, because x squared cannot be negative. In terms of complex numbers, if you are solving the problem in the domain of complex numbers, you have additionally x squared is equal to minus 1, so it's plus i and minus i as solutions to a regional equation. So this equation of the fourth order, I have represented as this equation of the second order substituting x squared with y. Well, obviously, there are more different substitutions. Maybe it's not just straightforward x squared to equals to y. Maybe it's something like x squared minus 1 is equal to y. But again, you have to guess this type of thing. And that's not easy. I understand that. But if you will be able to express certain uh, x to a certain degree, some kind of a uh, polynomial like x to the second degree plus something, in terms of the substitution of the variables, then you can reduce it. Uh, you can reduce the solution of this guy, this higher order uh, equation, to uh, solving this particular equation, which is of the lower order. And then, once you have uh, obtained the y, you can solve the next one in a little bit uh, simpler way, because it's rather, in this case, it's just a quadratic equation. Well, basically, these two methods, one is representation of the, as, as a product, and another is a substitution of certain uh, expression uh, of, for x in such a way that it gives you uh, a better uh, handle over the equation, this particular thing gives you a really uh, good two methods to solve equations of the higher order. Um, and they are very specific, these methods. There is nothing uh, general about them. And they are working only in certain specific cases. All right, well, that's basically all I wanted to uh, talk about today. Um, I would like you to take a look at the unisor.com website. There are many other interesting things there. And as far as the higher order uh, equations, um, I'll try to, to, to provide certain um, examples and uh, uh, problems, uh, which some of them I will solve on the, on the web. And uh, you are definitely invited to take a look at them. Thank you very much, and good luck.